Welcome to Catch You Outdoors. I'm your host, Captain Rob Modis. This podcast is about living and playing in the Florida Keys, a 125-mile-long chain of islands. I cover my favorite sport, fishing, but also all the many things to see and do down here in the Keys. Catch You Outdoors, hosted by Spotify, also brought to you by your favorite podcast network. So kick back and relax with me in the Keys. This episode of Catch the Outdoors is number 133. Hello all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are tuned into the podcast. I'm recording this on Sunday. Late Sunday afternoon, so some items may be uh, dated just a bit, as I usually mention. <laughs> thought about Monday, but eh, they're, they're working furiously on the house next door, building a new home next door, and so... Uh, it's probably best if I don't do that on a Monday. Um, more fishing coming up soon on this podcast, so stand by. I ventured into a whole new area in the glades. But first, a few items, more than a few. First, the items on my list. <laughs> Let's do it that way. Weather, it has been beautiful. And the wind's let down, finally, for a while. I say that as another front's headed this way for the end of the week. We've had lots of sunshine, and that's warmed the backcountry waters up quite a bit. On Friday, I got readings of 75 degrees and slightly higher in some places back there. Uh, lots of fish activity around everywhere, especially the mullet are in motion in the backcountry. Uh, they're much, much bigger, and the schools are much, much bigger uh, than the little finger mullet that were around just three weeks ago, four weeks ago. National Weather Service is calling for mostly dry frontal passage in the Keys, although it still will be a front. This is very rare. The one we just had is a, was a very rare cold front that made it all the way through the Keys down to Cuba. And that generally does not happen in April. And now we have another one that will push through, so they say. Um, that's okay. It's lowered our humidity. The, the air temperature is wonderful. It's about 81, 82 degrees, and the humidity is extremely low. So you don't ha get a case of the sweats or feeling about it. But the only thing we've noticed is that an abundance of mosquitoes have showed up. So you want to take your spray with you if you're going to march on the trails or do something, uh, you know, walking-wise. Uh, you might want, to, might want to hedge your bets on that one. Um, let's see. New Moon was on the 8th. And the half moon will be on the 14th or 15th, like right around those dates. Water has been moving great. Spring tides are spring tides and always will be. It doesn't really, I mean, I, I preach the moon a lot. And it's important to know that the new moon and the full moon, are your that's your moons you want to fish on. And either side of that, about two days. So about a five-day stretch, putting the moons in the middle. So new moon, full moon. Um the, however, in the spring, you start rolling into April and May, you get really, really good pushes just because the sun's getting higher and higher. Um, and the sun does pull that water up. So you get higher, uh, high tides, more water. And it really makes a big deal in the fish. And it helps flood the back. It helps flood the mangrove areas. The bait tends to move around the mangrove a little tighter, a little closer. And that brings some really nice big fish in. So, yay. <laughs> Let's see. What else here? NCAA finals on uh, Monday. Uh, that's tomorrow, right? Yes. Good grief. <clears throat> I'm guessing that UConn will win the whole thing. And by the time you listen to this, I'm guessing that UConn has won. Nothing against Purdue. I've been talking UConn from the get-go. Um, one thing I did find interesting uh, in reading the ESPN reports this morning um, and what I took away from it is most of the Cinderella's have fallen by the wayside. Um, I really wanted NC State to do better, but they didn't. That's okay. I mean, Purdue's a solid club. But what was interesting is the fact that the two that have remained, Purdue and UConn, are number ones. And were one, number ones uh, in the seeds from the start. And um, I don't know. I really don't know when the last time was that happened. I didn't do any research on that part of it. But I felt personally that that's pretty cool. I mean, that means that the selection committee got it mostly right. <laughs> and this is a tough year to guess, too, what was going to happen. I, I mean, I picked UConn from the get-go because they look like pros versus a college club. They're very, very good. So we'll see if uh, see what Purdue can do. And I have a good friend of mine that's a Purdue fan, so, you know. <laughs> the new book, 
what I know about Fishing Florida Keys is that the publisher is now going through the big time edits. We're also working on the cover and making sure that all the provided photos are properly credited to the photographers. That's a fun job. I have a lot of photos in this one, a lot of personal photos, a lot of stuff of fish, um, charts, things like that. So I like to make sure everybody gets their credit. Uh, there's several steps to go through, and that'll take a good portion of April. Uh, the first order looks like it'll be 100 books, and then, of course, there'll be Amazon. And as, as always, if you want a first run, you know, as soon as they become available, let you know you can order them, and I'll have them on my website at catchyoutdoors.com. There'll be a, there's a page for books there. You'll find the new book there, and you'll be able to order it. This year, um, it's looking like it'll be $29.95, and this time I will have to charge for shipping. I was doing $29.95 and including shipping and whatever price, like like $33, $34, whatever. It's going to be more. Um, the, probably, the retail of the book will be $29.95, but the shipping has gotten completely out of hand. And I'll have to address that when it happens because I was sending it doing like um, second days and stuff like that. Nope, it's probably going to have to be booked now just to get the, get the cost down. I hate to break it to you. There's not a whole lot of uh, leeway in a book as far as profit's concerned. So I, I can't afford to give it away. <laughs> I'd love to, but I can't. So my new song, Blue Rendezvous, was released a couple of weeks ago. Actually, it's more than three weeks ago now. Um, check it out. It's available on most music services. Search on my name, Rob Modis. It's much easier to find it that way because there's about eight or nine titles called Blue Rendezvous, which I didn't know. And nobody else probably knew either. <laughs> Mine's different. <laughs> Um, oh, mentioning the books. I got books for sale. There's three titles. You can get them on Amazon for both printed and Kindle. You can also buy them from my website, Catch you Outdoors, with a discount and shipping included on those, and they are signed. I'm trying to move them out. Got them in the garage. Found a bunch of them when I was cleaning out the storage room uh, after a move. So I have all three copies, uh, all three titles. Um, so get on there and get you one. Get them while they last. It ain't going to be this cheap ever again. Cheaper than Amazon. And you get them signed. Uh, I received a red tide report. I get these every week. Um, I used to use these a lot on my radio show, and I still get them. I get them actually twice a week. Um, the good news is that despite the recent releases of water from Lake Okeechobee by the Corps of Engineers, it hasn't shown any red tide in the usual spots along the southwest coast of Florida. Well, there, I think there was a spot of it in Sarasota a few weeks back, uh, not attributed to the release from Okeechobee. That's not how that works. But uh, the areas that would be affected directly would be Lee County, of course, and then south down into Naples, uh, or at least in that direction because of the water flow. Uh, but nothing on the chart. So I was relieved to see that, especially since the Corps has stopped releases uh, for the month of April. And they've also mentioned that they're going to downsize the releases in May. I don't know if they're going to pulse or, or every other day or everything. I don't know. I did, there wasn't a lot of detail about that, but all they said was they were going to slow it down a little bit. Um, the less they do, the better. Um, we shall see what they say about that. Please keep in mind that that the, the, the LACO releases are to prevent flooding over the or, or breaking of the dike, which runs all the way around the lake most vulnerable is the south and we have an above average hurricane season being predicted by the colorado state university the numbers just came out a few days ago though they do each year before the hurricane center does their own which i think will come out in may um this june let's see what do they say this june through november we could see 23 named storms in all including 11 hurricanes uh, five category three or higher major hurricanes. Normal number for the whole thing is usually 14. So, you know, 21 is, is 23 is obviously all, quite a bit more. A lot of things come into play with this. Um, the jet stream will be positioned differently and it won't be able to push things away like last year. And then we also have La Nina instead of El Nino. Uh, and that also causes issues with uh, hurricane locations and being able to push them away from us. So uh, get your hurricane gear in order. Preparations, batteries, water, all that fun stuff. Also your evacuation stuff, what you're going to put in the bucket to take with you. So um, be sure to do that. But uh, we shall see what happens on the water release. I, this, the reason I said this, this directly reflects the water release part of it. The water release part is uh, it's an issue because you have... Um, 
a tremendous amount of rain on storms like this. And they're going to have to sufficiently lower that lake level before the big time rains get here. So all we can do really is just hope that that don't happen. So keep your fingers crossed. Let's see. What else? I got all kinds of things on this thing. Oh, also a note on the hurricane part. For those of you that would like to come to um, um, Florida in September, probably shouldn't. <laughs> just, I'll just say, that's the peak of hurricane season. I am always stunned how many people decide to come down here in September and early October. Yes, the fishing is fabulous. I won't say that it isn't. It's great. But all in all, it's just it's just one of those things that you do not want to mess with. Um Trying to trying to uh, avoid September at all cost. Um, this could be a tough year for Florida. When you got this many storms predicted, you know something's up. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, let's do some fishing stuff. Yes, indeed, I fished on Friday. Had a wonderful day. Perfect weather. Winds and tides all came together. It was quite a day, with a few surprises. First of all, I fished an entirely new area. I love doing that. Uh, since I'm not guiding, I don't need to be finding fish for anybody, so I can experiment. That's cool. <laughs> I missed doing that for about 15, 18, 19, how many, many years it was. A long damn time. Uh, about the only thing I kept the same uh, were the arties that I was using, the artificials. Um, yep, gulp swimming, gulp swimming mullet. Pff, gulp swimming mullet. I'll get it out. And the uh, Z-Man jig heads. That's pretty much all I use. I mean, I did do a few change-ups with some mirror lures and things that just did not do well. I mean, I could tell right away the fish weren't interested. But as soon as I went back to using the soft plastics, it was like bang, bang, bang. I'm going to have to go up into these areas with some live shrimp one day just for giggles and grins. But in the meantime, the artificials work well and they're so much easier to use. Um, I got snook, jacks, kudas, some really nice size mangrove snapper. Got my limit of mangrove snapper, uh, five. That's the limit. That was enough for two dinners for Janelle and myself. Light fried the first batch last night. That was Saturday night, and we'll probably go with grilling them on Monday. Not doing fish tonight. Well, I don't know if I am or not, to be honest with you. We're going to Ziggy and Mad Dogs. That's okay. Be jealous. Uh, guess what I'm having? <laughs> yeah, my usual filet mignon. Yeah, of course. Uh some shrooms, some big old baked potato. I'm ready, man. I'm so hard. I didn't eat lunch today on purpose. So looking forward to that. Water temp was uh, 75, as I said, in the back with a few bumps to 77. Depends on where I was. Nice high tide when I got back there that had immediately turned and was flowing out. So as it goes out, it pulls that water uh, from the Everglades uh, down through the mangroves. And the small cuts open up. It was really just, it was perfect. Um, matter of fact, I could not have lined it up any better. Um, and the morning was about up there was about 61, 62 degrees. The air temperature when I got up there it was about 70 down here. Uh, but as you go north, you lose the ocean water. So you, you don't get the warming of that water. And it was noticeably chillier. Um, this Florida boy had on two layers. So, and eventually I got down to one, which is great. <laughs> um, never saw anyone. Up there, I saw one boat on the way back, uh, close to home, and then I saw a whole string of boats when I got real close to home. People were out enjoying the weather, jet skiers, the usual stuff that we see down around the island. But um, it was really, really cool. I mean, I really had just a just the best time with that, and um, uh, look forward to doing it again, doing it again soon. Uh, snook was snook was big. That was a nice fish. Big jacks. The, about the most bizarre thing that happened up there, I was reeling in a cuda that was about maybe 20 inches in length, and he got attacked by a school of jacks that had to be in the 12 to 15 pound each. Gigantic jacks. I mean, they were they were trying to eat a barracuda, if that tells you anything, so it was pretty crazy. Um, I, just, I just thought that was about the coolest thing I've ever seen. So uh, <laughs> you never know. I'll tell you now, if you're hearing... Any beeps or boops in the background, all of my friends have decided to text each other about the eclipse. <laughs> and I'm running around trying to turn stuff off that makes beeps and boops. <sighs> anyway, 
Okay, so uh, wildlife up there in the back while I was there. One lone dolphin all by his lonesome. Lots of birds. One making a call I did not recognize, never heard before. Um, almost like a coot, but it just it was different. And um, I, I remember Janelle's got this really cool app that she uses called the Merlin Bird App. And um, it's on her phone. It lets you record bird calls. And then it'll tell you what it is, what, what type of bird it is. And uh, I'm going to have to add that to my phone because, you know, you, up in the back, you think you've heard everything until you're in a different area. And it was like, what in the world is that? And it was talking to another bird. So in other words, there was a bird further away I could hear doing the same thing. These two were having a very long conversation. I would love to know what it was. So I'm going to add that app for the next time. Water clarity was good. Not crystal clear like Florida Bay and, and nowhere near like the Atlantic Ocean is right now. Uh, more like Gulf Coast waters on a good day. Uh, Viz down to about three feet, some places two. Um, but it was pretty easy to make out fish moving across the bottom. So um, um, I'm sure most of you have heard about the spinning fish issue uh, down here in the lower keys uh, that's been hev- it's being heavily studied is what's going on, especially the deaths of quite a few small tooth um, sawfish. Um, highly regulated fish on the endangered species list. Um, and it's, I think we've lost 30 or 32 at last count. Um, they don't really know what's causing it, but they're narrowing it down. It's good. They're, they have put a ton of money into the research. As a matter of fact, last count, I think, um, I mean, there were several million dollars put into, uh, by the governor to research this and try to figure out what in the devil's going on. Uh, we have not seen much of it up here in the northern part of the Keys. However, there has been some on the upper east coast of Florida, above the Fort Lauderdale area. So it's kind of weird that it skipped us. Um, they've pretty much ruled out water quality and have centered on a dinoflagellate called um, Gam. Let's see if I can say this. Gambier discus. There you go. I got it. That normally lives on the seafloor, but has somehow made it into the water column, and it's attaching itself to grasses. Um, and that's about all I can find out about it so far. This stuff is highly toxic. Um, I know it's a, some sort. Of, it's like ciguatera, and it might even be in the ciguatera family. Um, and that's a problem. I don't. For those of you that aren't familiar, that it's the reason we don't eat barracuda. Um, they, they get ciguatera in their meat fairly easily, especially as they grow. And ciguatera, um, well, it can kill you, quite frankly. Um, it can paralyze you if you eat, if you eat, if you eat the meat. So it's, it's, a, a ba- it's bad for humans. And um, they're looking at this very seriously. So no words or warnings about eating anything. I certainly wouldn't eat a spinning fish. And nobody eats sawfish, so it's illegal as hell. It's illegal to take one. Um, but anyway, that's what's going on. I'll keep you posted on what's going on. If you want to know more, you can check out Bonefish Tarpon Trust website. That's the one I would go to first because they seem to have the most information on there. Um, they're reporting almost daily what's being found about the situation. Also, there was a really good article three days ago on the Saltwater Sportsman Magazine site online. So check out Saltwater Sportsman Magazine. Um, I, I thought it was excellent. Uh, they really explained the science part of it and a lot of what's being researched and why it's being researched and why this is such an unusual occurrence. Um, Seven Mile Bridge will be closed April the 13th. That's this coming Saturday, 6 to 9 a.m. for the Seven Mile Bridge run. This is always interesting. It's kind of a headache for those of us that are in the middle of it. Um we know not to do it. <laughs> Just don't go near it. But for those of you that are coming down and you're planning on going to the Keys on Saturday, to Key West specifically, Key West on Saturday morning, that bridge is closed south of Marathon and it will stay closed for three hours, six to nine. And they do not open it and they will not let you through. If you arrive at 6.05 in the morning or 6.01, the bridge will be closed. So please be aware of that. As the sheriff says, nobody gets through. Uh, so plan accordingly. The traffic should be a mess in the area. Might want to have a nice long breakfast. Perhaps if you're in a resort, chill by the pool. You know, just slow it down a little bit. Just welcome to the Florida Keys. That's just the way it is. And now it's time for useless information. 
And now, from the original book of useless information. You are a reject! You are useless! You can get a job down here cleaning toilets! Here's your host, Captain Rob Modis. Well, he swears up and down he's useless. But, uh... He might be all right eventually, but completely useless. With useless information. All right, this week, let's go to the movies. (laughs) Number one, the first real motion picture theater was called a Nickelodeon because the admission was a nickel. The first of those type of theaters. Uh, The first opening uh, was in McKeesport, Pennsylvania on June 19th, 1905. And the motion picture shown was The Great Train Robbery. Yeah. Number two, the first word spoken by an ape in the movie Planet of the Apes was smile. I seem to remember that. Number three, Walt Disney's autograph bears no resemblance to the one as part of the famous Disney logo. And there you go until next week. (sighs) Before I go, and you've noticed this is going to be a very short one. I didn't have a whole lot of stuff going on this week, so... uh, I'll try to do a little better next week. We probably won't get to 25 minutes on this beast. Matter of fact, I know we won't. <laughs> Before I go, uh, I may have a special guest on next Tuesday's podcast, April the 16th. This is from my old radio sh- station days in Fort Myers. I'm working on it, so you'll just have to tune in to see if it happens. Uh, most likely it will, and I'm pretty excited about that. It'll be an awful lot of fun to have um, him uh, back on another microphone for at least a little while. That's why I think the next week's going to go quite a bit longer. So we'll, we'll shorten this one down. Y'all take care in the meantime. Hope you get out there and go fishing. Hope you enjoy this beautiful weather that we're having. And I hope it, all of all of you folks in the Keys obviously are going to know it, enjoy it. The rest of you in Florida, I hope you do too. Don't worry. Winter is ending. I promise. You people way up north, it really is. Maybe. I don't know. I don't. The groundhog was definitely wrong. So we'll have to see what happens after this. I'll take care and I'll talk to you all next week. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed listening, please tell a friend, leave a review, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The Facebook page is Catch you Outdoors. The website is CatchYouOutdoors.com, where you can find all the previous podcasts and a schedule of what's coming up. Until next time, get outdoors and enjoy. Enjoy.